what's up? My name is Akwabu, and as you all can see, we are here. It's a live character. And as you can see, yeah, Kasa is also here. Mutu Mutu and Grandpa, yeah, Kasa. See you later. Thank you and welcome to Yeah Kasa TV. My name is Jibril, aka Facebook Assemblyman. Thank you for selecting this video or our content to watch on a daily basis. I'm happy uh, we are getting feedback on our comments and sections and stuff and we want to show appreciation for all what you are doing. Don't forget to subscribe to this channel as well as go on Instagram and follow us on Yekasa TV. Yekasa TV is Y-E-K-A-S-A -A TV on Instagram. Follow us. We'll give you entertainment, celebrity, lifestyle updates for you to enjoy. Today I have here with me legendary Mr. Richard Kwesisiao Afrofi. Uh, you probably will know him as Xdo, legendary hip life artist Xdo. I have to tell you that um, I, I've been wanting to meet him for a while now and because of time schedule I'm sure COVID-19 also has made things so difficult for us. Uh, I want us to talk and you know delve into the past. Let's know how things started for him as X2 and how things are going on for him at the moment. Thank you for having me uh, Mr. X2. Yeah thank you very much. How are you doing? Doing good, pretty good, you know, managing. COVID-19 and it's Wahala. <laughs> how, are you, how is the family treating it? Oh yeah, we're taking it easy. You know, it's not just me, you know, the whole world is experiencing it. And we are just coping. In that, you know what I mean? Now, you know, as an entertainer, everything has come to an halt. We, we don't play shows, we don't play events, we don't play anything again. So we're just coping, yeah. managing it at home. Yeah. Do you remember the last time or uh, the last time you were on stage? Yeah, yeah, if I quite remember, the last time I was on stage was uh, the MTN Music Festival, uh, yeah, the conference center, yeah, that was the last time I was on stage. But apart from that, I've been playing around with my, with my band, we've been touring some little, little, you know, joints, not a major joint, but little joint where we've been playing to make some little coins for, for ourselves, you know what I mean, yeah. Let's, let's go back to the 90s. Um, you came out somewhere 96 to 99, 90 to 96, thereabout. Do you remember your first song you, you produced? Yeah, the first song uh, I, I produced or I came out with actually was one of the songs that I've been using before even I got a record deal. Mm. That was the song I've been using on stage as an up and coming, as an underground artist, mm. you know. So that song is called Davi Made a Cuckoo. Yeah, that was that was a song that that actually made the waves for X Do. That opened the way for me. You know, me Davi made the cuckoo. If you can remember, Davi made the cuckoo. Me play cuckoo. The color na fi fi la ji ajo. Yeah, that was a that was a pretty song I uh, I did, which I featured a friend called Chicago on it, as you can see. Yeah. So that was that was my first song actually. Yeah. Let's talk about your, your deal. Um, how did it come about? First ever deal. Yeah, I played. On the show, there was this big show at Kaneshi Sports Complex okay. around 95, mm. get to late 95 to 96. Yeah. You know, I mean, I played the show and then it was a big show. There was this uh, inter Ghanaian based London international artist called Atentemben at that time. And he was playing in Ghana, so we decided to. I was one of the open arts. So I opened f for that show and then boom. It happened that I was the only guy that shook the whole place the in the air yeah, with the song. And then that was why I dropped that medical class. I told you, I was using it on stage before even I got a record deal. So this man just saw me on the stage and realized how I was shaking the stage. He decided to take me to the studio. He decided to invest in me. So he gave me his card to look for him after us. And then, but I didn't take him serious. After a while, after a while, I, I did it. You know what I mean? I started looking for him and then he took me to the studios and boom, we, we recorded our single. Do you, do you, can you tell me the number of songs you've, you've brought out as, as X2? The past, the just some of songs, you, you how many songs have you, have you brought out? Countless, you know, countless. You know, I've done, I've done a lot of songs that, uh, you know, I did David made a cuckoo. I did Dasi Brekasa, I did Musha Wele. That was on the same album, and then it was pretty long. Uh, I did, you know, 
Accra, maybe I love you so. I don't know if you were young, so I don't know. You wouldn't. I was, I was young, seriously. I was young, but I, I heard some of the songs and I still vibe to some of them. Let's let's dodge into the um, institutions that hold our music today. If I go on digital platforms, I'm looking for as those songs you see, um, different, different accounts handling these um, songs and stuff. Do you make money from, from the songs you've brought out? Yeah, I, I, I make not too much because, you know, our era, you know, digital platforms were not available. We were dealing solely with um, CDs and tapes, you know what I mean? That's what we were dealing with. Yeah, so actually we were doing, you know, cassettes, CDs, tapes and all that. That was what we were doing. We were not using digital platforms so it got to a point where we became very like crippled you know when the migration started you know what i mean when digitalizations was coming up so it got to a point where we were very very crippled because we didn't have no idea about that you know what i mean so it crippled us a bit and that was where people started taking our songs taking advantage on our songs to put it at different platforms where we don't even know anything about it you know what I mean? But frequently and you know, luckily we've been getting involved with the digitalization and digital platforms. So now we are chasing everybody who's using our song illegally, who is not authorized to use our content on their programs, on their platforms and stuff like that. We've been chasing all of them through Musica and Gamro. Yeah, so definitely we'll be chasing all of them. We are getting some of them and some of them too is a bit hard to contact them and to get them. So we are writing to all this platforms youtube facebook then, uh, all the digital Spotify, platforms yeah so anybody that uses any content without our authorization must be yeah will be taken down so that's what we are doing now. you mentioned uh musica you mentioned uh gamro other artists are saying that these uh, institutions aren't doing anything for the artists but you just mentioned would, would you agree with them yeah, in some way, yeah, in some way to know because uh, we expect them to do more. You know, we expect them to, you know, considering the years we've come now, we expect them to do more and to, you know, protect the rights of all musicians in Ghana. You understand what I mean? And they are not doing more because um, what we expect them to do, they are not even gotten to that extent. You know what I mean? Um, it's a bit shameful when we have a whole body like Musica, a whole body like Musica and, and Gamro, you know, you know, protecting the rights of artists in this country and they are not doing enough because still we still have some loopholes that we need to manage with. Do you think it is because they don't have the financial background or the, the, the workers or those making sure things should be put in place are not just effective at all? Yeah, I think they are not effective. You know, what I mean, when it comes to financial back, they they have it. Mm. Yeah, because they have it. I mean, government is backing them mm. individually. Uh, people are backing them. You know, they pay everybody everybody that uses music in Ghana and in the world pays something to them mm. for us. So money aspect is okay with them. Mm. You know, but what I think is they they are not choosing or picking the right people. To represent us when it comes to Gamro or Musica, the the right people are not there, you know, because we hear is Gamro or uh, Musica, we know it's about musicians, you know what I mean. So definitely, people expect that musicians should be heading that place, but which is wrong, you know what I mean? Because if you don't have the ideas and the ethics to go and manage those things, and you go there because you're a musician, you you put us in, in into trouble. You, you just mentioned uh, most people, because it's musical, because it's gamble, they should be headed by musicians and that. I was speaking to Prior Tate here recently, and he also mentioned the same thing. And he even went ahead to say that they should suck everybody at gamro and musica and bring in the tech. Would you agree with him on that level? Of course, of course. You know me, you know, we can, we can, we can have a board of directors. With the board of directors, fine, musicians can come on board. But administration... And stuff like that must be handled with people with, you know, the the tr the technical know-how, people who has actually studied copyright and how to, you know, 
get revenues from from all these platforms you know what i mean so this is what we need them to do but just because he's a popular musician he doesn't have no technical knowledge then people vote for him to go and sit down because it's something about musicians which is very bad you know what i mean they can have the board of directors and musicians one or two three musicians can represent musicians to advise you know because we expect them and we know that um we know that um that most of them uh, 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 have our feeling they've gone through our feelings and stuff like that so it's it's easier for them to tell our problem and tell stories you know what i mean but ghana it is not all true like that you know what i mean it's not all true like we must get the right people with the right technical uh, know-how to 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 do the thing so at this point will you say that musica and Gabriel have failed the artists yeah, in some way, you know what I mean? But they need to step up. They need to step up their game. They need to, you know, do more research and to do a proper research with proper res uh, um, um, outcome. You know, you cannot just do research without bringing us any outcome from the research you make. You know what I mean? But you should do a proper research to give us the results of every uh, uh, um, uh, research you do. You know what I mean? You should be traveling outside. Go outside. Go and learn more things from outside countries, those developed or already developed countries and come and teach us or use those known no, no things and bring it down to Ghana to, to help the industry. But they are not doing it. Yes, so that, that comes to where we some time ago heard that Obo went to government and took some money for music in the name of, um, you know, he's going. He, they were doing research on stuff like that. Do you think that was necessary? It was on the right direction to go and solicit the money for research. But if you solicit for the money and you don't use it accordingly, accordingly or what you went to solicit the money for, then it's totally wrong and stupidly. Mm. You know, because if you cannot just go and take money on behalf of research, now you come, you do the research, what is the response? Where is the result? You know, every risk. So if a boy has gone to collect the money, it's in the right direction. But is in the right direction for the research and where is the where is the results after doing the research what did you gain yeah. what what did you tell us what did you brought yeah. us yeah. from the results so to me it is not uh, uh, necessary, necessary at all it wasn't necessary they went for the money and they used it for something else let's let's come back to you and your songs then we can now talk of your I'm, I'm told you have a new project that will come exdo maba I've heard that song countless times. People say, oh, that song was a this song to some people. Did you actually do it to um, let some people know that you have really arrived and you want to tell, prove something else to them? Yeah, of course. You know, I'm a rapper. I'm a rap artist. And when it comes to rap, we, we, we drive on stuff like that. Okay. Give me the genesis of how that, that, that the whole beef or that this song came about. You see, when I was coming out, when I had my first album, people loved me. And at the same time, people started hating me because I was excelling. You know what I mean? Even to extend that, some of them are my close friends. That I even use my platform to open space for them to even come out. So they can even excel and get named too as, 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 as friends. That's what I can do. So it got to a point and those people started fighting me back. Using my help and everything I helped them with to fight me back making me feel like i'm the bad person and to extend that I, I got very 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 angry and around that time it wasn't like now that i, I talked to you smoothly around that time my heart was not good you know I, I i can't take things for granted like that i i get mad easily and i get pissed off easily and i don't i don't like respect you if you don't respect me you understand so that's where i started you know thinking about all these guys so i selected them and i put them down mm. and i prayed to god to open another way for me because coming from that the genesis of all you said was because i featured a friend mm. called chicago mm. and then later on i realized that he was doing some things behind me okay. so i had a problem with the firm that was producing with me the firm that was producing the artist myself, you know, the management team and stuff. So we got to a point where we had to stop working. Okay. 
so i stopped working with them and then within some few days i heard chicago was working with them okay so you felt betrayed yeah yeah of course i felt betrayed i was like oh how because you people know what went down you knew that these people were not really treating me right yeah. So does it mean you were telling them stuff about me? Does it mean you were, you were just chipping things to them so that they can stop working with me? Or what? So I got mad. So I started, I stopped talking to him. I wasn't seeing him because anytime I meet him, I, I wanted to fight him. So I didn't want to see his face at all. Well, like, I didn't want to see his face cry. So that was where the ex do my back came. Yeah. So why are people affiliating me to Reggie Raxton as well? Yeah, because Rockstone, I didn't have no beef with Rockstone. Rockstone is my friend. Uh, we're all on the same field, yeah. you know. But as a rapper, I don't want you to come and flex me with some kind of phrases. Uh, you know what I mean? He's a rapper and I'm a rapper. You yeah. can't come and represent some place whilst we are in Accra. You yeah. can't represent some, some different city whilst we are representing Accra. Yeah. It, it makes us weak. It makes us feel like Accra, we are not doing anything. Yeah. You know, you're living in Accra, you brought up in Accra, you know what I mean? Everything in Accra was helping you, Accra crowd was supporting you, and you are representing Osekrum. Oh. <laughs> you know, you are representing Osekrum. How can you represent Osekrum whilst living in Accra? That's, that's, you're that, supposed wasn't to, that wasn't fair. You're supposed to represent Accra. You know what I mean? As we are all struggling and trying to make this industry hold in Accra. And you are representing Osekrum, calling yourself Osekrum president. You understand? That was, that was what kicked you. Yeah, that was what kicked me. I was like, no, nah, man, he can't say that. Because a second president is supposed to be a Chame, Lord Kenya, uh, uh, Joe Fraser, any of those guys. Mm. You know what I mean? Not, uh, not Reggie Rockstone. Because Reggie Rockstone, you are here. Mm. You are in Accra. How can you stay in Accra and be like a second president? <laughs> you know what I mean? Right there, I felt like, no, homeboy is not doing the right way. So a, do me a favor. Give me like three lines of the ex dome about when I walk on you, when I can you, Johnny Cotte, ex do, what to be dear to your combeshe, Rasta want to rig your whistle with your rapper, media minimum several with your dancer, or one person number your master, master, when you made there, I saw whom the rapier, clear, above whom, that about me, a soft sepan, why I turn once a womb, a crapinian rapper, I be ubit me, me there be, that be the cook and dine to me, sir, rapper, two into one tea, or being cantina, mammy, a crapin becas in Patosi, where you are bear, Nippa Cro, Chicago, rapper, and mete, and yet drew Yanko Chrome, who, Omu Crab, believe me, you go, I yawo ka. Are you? Mo ma me kwai ma menka. Are you? Edu me ya ya woka. Are you? Mo ma me kwai ma menka. I go. Hey, my back. Who? My back. Hey, my back. Ex do a back. Hey, my back. Who? Oh, my banti munda nen kote. Ex do you still have that artistic um way of putting things out? Should Ghanaians expect more from you? Of course, I'm an artist. I mean, this is what I do to take care of my family, take care of myself. I'm, I'm an artist, so I can't let it go. If I, if I lose that, then I'm going down. Then it means that I'm not, I, won't, I won't be able to do anything. That's what pays me. So I try to take more, more serious and more uh, importantly careful about, about my movement just to keep the artistic image on me. You know what I mean? Definitely I'm coming out. You know what I mean? I'm still doing music. I'm still doing music, maybe not uh, uh, like before, oh, yeah. but I'm still a musician. I play more shows now down to record in the studio. Oh, okay. Yeah, I do more tours and travel around to play shows more because I've got more classic songs that people do enjoy. It. So I play more of them, but I haven't dropped out with any album yet. And that is what I'm about to do. Okay. You know. so let's, let's talk about that. Um, any preparations to drop something out? Apart from the, the performance of, uh, of, of, of songs that uh, at clubs are storing? Yeah, yeah, of course. Uh, I have, I have, an, uh, uh, I have a, some projects that I'm bringing out. It's an EP album. Mm -hmm. Yes, it's an EP album. And at the same time, I have this project that I'm bringing out. And on the EP album, there's a single that comes with a project mm -hmm. on the EP album titled Fatu Das Bin Mu. Fatty dance beam, you that's, know. That's, that, 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 that should mean you are you are putting. What what's, what's the fatu dance beam about? Literally, it means put it in a dance beam. Yeah. You know, fatu dance. What do we use dance beam for? For trash. trash. You understand? So if you're a rapper and you know you are putting out a lot of trash music, please put it in a dance beam. You know what I mean? We don't need it. If <laughs> if if you're an MC and you know you are putting a lot of trash music or trash lyrics out, put it in a dance beam. And at the same time, we should take care of ourselves. Mm. 
you know what I mean? We should take the the uh, the surroundings very well. We shouldn't be littering around. Yeah. You know, so it's a broad music. Yeah. You understand what I mean? As a social responsibility as an artist, mm -hmm. I believe that I should do something for the general public to have, uh, yes, have some benefits from it. So I'm doing this song as a social responsibility as an artist, as ex do, because I have fans that follows me, I have followers that follows me to my programs, and I believe if I say a word, they will, they will pick it up. So, Fatu Das Bimu is more about sanitizing our environment, you know what I mean, to, you know, make sure we don't make um, um, trash around, we don't put things on the floor to get the gutter choked, we don't put garbage in, in gutters to get them choked, you know, to, to make sure to sanitize people's conscience about how to use the dustbin more. Because I believe all this trash we see on the floor of Accra and at our major cities is because we don't know how to use the dustbin. So people go do general cleaning and then the next two, three days, another trash comes again. But if we're able to, you know, advocate and tell Ghanaians that dustbins are more important more important than even sweeping because when you sweep where will you put it in a dustbin yeah. you know what i mean so we should know how to use the dustbin more so the song derives on that and the title is fato dustbin mu fato dustbin you started with um you know giving a scenario of artists that put out wax songs and that you should they should put their songs in the dustbin as just as you said this new era um with a new crop of artists this song would definitely be directed to people, the new MCs in the in the house. Are you trying to tell us that the new MCs are doing songs that they, they need to put in the dustbin? Uh, <laughs> not really, you know what I mean? Because everything you do, there will be some crap ones and there will be good ones. Mm. You know what I mean? So I'm definitely talking to the crap ones. So if you know you're a crap MC, mm. if you know you're a crap and a trash MC, please put yourself in a dustbin. You know what I mean? That's for sure. But if you're doing a good music and you're doing a... I mean, good stuff. Please continue and do it well. You know what I mean? Ghanaians, we always think about money. Yeah. So if you do anything trash, even if it's bringing you money, you don't care. But you don't know that you are killing the future generation. Mm. Because if we were doing trash music, it wouldn't have been held at this time, this time. Yeah. for people to come and do and for the young ones to even follow up and do it. Mm. You know what I mean? So, uh, what everything you do, definitely there will be some people, the bad ones and the good ones. Mm. So if you know you are among with the bad MCs, the trash MCs, please stop it and do good music and put the trash in the dustbin. I know you listen to other MCs as well when they bring out their songs. Which ones do you say that oh, this guy, didn't, this particular guy or this particular MC needs to go and come back again because he wasn't prepared? Oh, I love them. I love them. And Can you mention them? When I mention their names, it promotes them all the time. <laughs> uh, it makes them. It makes them feel big that mm. Xdo is mentioning them. They know themselves. There are a lot of crap MCs out there. You know what I mean? But me, I won't be mentioning their names again. Management doesn't even want me to mention their names mm. again because the moment I mention their names, it helps them. Mm. It double up. But you and I know they know themselves. If they are watching this, they know they can mention names. A lot of them. A lot of trash music out there. Ghanaians. Seem in the industry, the music industry, of the media seems to push that agenda, mm. and and it's killing. I mean, a lot of music. Mm.